1974. It was created in 1976 with the action of a steering committee after the Groundwater Management District Act was enacted for local groups to be able to take local control um, of conservation and management of the local aquifer. The primary mission of GMD4 is kind of threefold. First of all, it's conservation and management of the Ogallala Aquifer within our district boundaries. Secondly, it's to take local control over those regulations and manage it as we see it pertinent and important to our area, as well as to collaborate with state, local, and other federal agencies to continue those efforts. The first lima is what we call the Sheridan 6 lima. The first one was from 2013 through 2017. And it's an area of 99 sections in Sheridan County, western Sheridan County, and in a small portion of Thomas County. It has an area of uh, greater than 2% average annual decline, and the locals decided it was time that we did something. What it entails is 55 inches over the course of five years. They're still not allowed to go over their annual authorized quantity. And so during that first five-year period, it was, uh, it was quite, there was some growing pains that occurred. But at the end of the day, what the goal was, was 114,000 acre feet to be used over the course of five years. Now, take that back a step, and we got about 56,500 acre feet that is officially appropriated for that area annually. So to go to a goal of 114,000 acre feet over the course of five years is quite a substantial cut. At the end of the day, um, those producers actually only pumped about 89,000 acre feet over the course of those five years. It was a culture shift that, that really can't be explained, but it's wonderful to go in that area and know what they were talking about before and actually bragging about how much less water they're using and getting the same yields. The GMD4 Lima that, that was just enacted or, or started in 2018, and we're near three and a half of that. But what we're beginning to see is the same culture shift that we saw in Sheridan 6 to where they're talking about, okay, I've got to do more with less, how do I do that? Although we're not at critical stages as to you know, just give up on the crop, it's at least a reduction to where the producers can manage that by just pinching back or just doing a couple of little things that changes their operation to get them to conserve more water and be more mindful of their production. Water sustainability and water conservation has always been an idea and a concept that's been very important to our family, but we really began to get serious about integrating novel technologies into our business really in the past 10 years. It began with smart cow cooling systems, and as we've recognized and become more knowledgeable about the value of water and the reduction in the aquifer, uh, we've implemented things like variable rate water technology on our pivots, soil moisture probes. Obviously, the cornerstone of the on-farm, on-dairy operations is our evaporative milk condensing plant. Through that plant, we reclaim approximately 65,000 gallons of fresh water a day, reduce our freight to move finished goods by approximately 75% and ultimately keep water where it's most vital and above the source from which it came. You know, water conservation is important for us for a variety of reasons. Number one is that we just feel there's a moral imperative to do the right thing, and we believe conserving water is the right thing. That being said, our family has staked our livelihood and our future on Northwest Kansas, and ultimately on the ability to have a viable economy in Northwest Kansas. We depend on these communities that we live in to sustain us, and we believe that by conserving water, we can prolong the, the life expectancy of not only our family's business, but the communities in which we live. My personal favorite technology is the evaporative milk condensing plant that we have here on our farm. But if I were to rank them in order, I would have to say probably our, our evaporative condensing plant, but then the soil moisture probes. The ease of, of management of our crop fields through the utilization of, of that type of technology, it's allowed us to grow and maintain employee headcount, ultimately because we are more efficient, but it allows us to be more efficient in the use of our natural resources. You know, my advice for other farms that have an interest in becoming conservers of water or exploring a water technology farm relationship is don't wait. There are simple, low cost, no cost ways in which we can all conserve water. But I believe that the best thing to do is to just get involved and jump. There's ample resources, whether it be at the state level or at the producer level or at the vendor level that can help you 
understand technology, evaluate the economics of implementing certain technology, and case studies of, of farmers and other businesses that are interested in or actively working towards conserving water and being more water efficient. And my best advice is just get started. Don't be afraid, just jump. So obviously being as we are located here in GMD4, we work with Shannon and her team at the local office quite a lot. We work with them on obviously as we acquire irrigated crop ground or look to make adjustments to how our irrigation water is utilized, we work extensively with their office. At this point, we haven't really established a huge relationship with Northwest Tech, but we have all intentions of beginning to develop a relationship there and hopefully helping us push our conservation technology and our conservation mindset to the next level. Precision agriculture is a term that came into the agriculture industry about 20 years ago. It's really the adoption of using GPS computers and automation and sensors in agriculture and it's been growing as technology has grown over the last 20 years. And so precision agriculture is the way that we're being competitive with other world economies and it's emerged uh, in different kinds of ways in different types of cropping systems all across the world. We've had about 120 students come through the program to date. About a solid two-third of them, 70% of them, are coming off of Kansas farms or coming out of the three-state region. Another one-third of them are, are, are strong STEM students that are coming all across the nation. So they're into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and they have high aptitude for electronics, science, physics, and they understand more of the biology and the chemistry side of things. And they may or may not go on to the farm, but they're definitely going out and we're getting them jobs in industry as the support personnel um, for, for the producer. Shannon was one of the first partners of our program. We sat down in 2015 and had a conversation about making sure that water management and water technology was going to be part of the focus of the Precision Ag program. And by default it is, but being out here in the Great Basin area sitting on top of the Ogallala Aquifer, it was a very timely manner because our groundwater management district and the, and the conservation efforts out here were already moving towards limiting some of the water use just because of the decline that the KGS had already done all of uh, the last 50 years of, of monitoring and modeling. We've seen the declines um, just south of us and we've seen declines even within our own district. And so we wanted to come up with a, a, a strategy where we could put tools, resources and, and knowledge into these young producers' minds that they can take back to the farm and use that was going to help get more bang for the buck, so to speak. Do we have to use quite as much water on that corn to still get our economic viability out of it? And if you stress certain crops at the right times, you can put 20% less water on there, but you have to be diligent about how much water they're getting. Well, without some of the things like soil moisture probes and some of the other field sensors, our producer hasn't been able to monitor that effectively. So perfect convergence of a lot of great technology innovation, price points getting to be right. The Groundwater Management District has put a lot of initiatives and funding options out there for producers to get a hold of this equipment um, in an efficient manner. Our school, especially in 2017, we ramped up uh, with an initiative with, with Shannon. We put out about 22 different soil moisture probes for producers at no cost to them, and our students installed all of the equipment. So we get into that field where that accountability is coming all the way back from the consumer all the way back to us as the producer, and we have to be able to say, hey, this is how much water we used. This is how much chemical that we used. And our students and our workforce are out there supporting area producers.